You heard? Yeah. Did you need rest? We will tonight. Mr. Marler, I take it you're not through. Um, uh, no, sir, Your Honor. The uh, defense would like to recall to the stand Agent Gus Toro. You're still on the earth, sir. Got it, Judge. Good afternoon. Hello, Counselor. Earlier in this trial, you recall testifying, quote, I'm totally responsible for everything in this case, including the evidence gathered, unquote. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, you were responsible, or yes, you recall? Yes, yes, yes. Well, good. I'm glad that your memory's in fine form today because we're about to go over your evidence and since you were totally in charge, you have a lot to answer for. Good. Agent Nitoro, let's begin with the body that you found in the lake. Yes, it was a human body, unlike the dog ashes that were originally planted in place of Carmen Santos's body. Yes, it was somebody's body, yes, but the problem is it wasn't Carmen's. I had an anonymous tip to search the lake, and I did that. And I found a body, and on that body was a piece of jewelry with a Carmen nameplate. And I had dental records to match. What does that mean to you? But you were prepared to pass that body off as Carmen Santos, no matter what. No, not no matter what. Everything that I just said, plus the fact that your own client over there admits to having dumped the body right there after he shot her to death. Objection. Isn't that enough? Your Honor, yes or no, when appropriate. Sustained. Thank you. I accepted the identification of the body as Carmen Santos, compliments of the Springfield Police Department's Cracker Jack forensics team. That was my mistake. I know the FBI is having a bad year, but it is monumentally incompetent to end up with the wrong body. So let's move on to the bullet, the bullet that was found during the autopsy in this Jane Doe. Do you know where it came from? Sure. It came from the gun of your client. Now, how could that possibly be if the body you have is not Carmen? How could a bullet from Danny's other gun, the gun that wasn't even at the scene, how could that bullet end up in a Jane Doe? I don't know. Ask your client. You should pay attention. We did, in testimony. It's still a mystery. Hmm. Now then, Agent Peterson, he testified that on June 5th, he was conducting surveillance in a van in front of the Bauer House, on your orders? Correct. And Detective Cooper testified that on June 5th, the entire Bauer household, including Danny Santos, was detained at the police station, also on your orders? Well, if she said that, then it must be true. Your Honor, please. Yes or no, Agent? Yes, yes. Yes, so then the house was empty? That seems to be the case. Where were you? I beg your pardon. Everyone else is accounted for. Where were you? I don't recall. That was our busy season. Head of the investigation and you don't know where you were. Did you order Agent Peterson to alter the tape and cut out the sound of the gunshot? Oh. Die, slimeball. Admit it. You're as crooked as a dog's hind leg, Megalito. I'll work. Did you order Agent Peterson to erase the sound of the gunshot? Agent Peterson is a green new field agent. He is inexperienced. I've seen it happen a thousand times. New agents are really eager to get an arrest, to get a conviction, and sometimes they will go a little too far, even if it's for the best of reasons. Now, to reiterate some of Agent Peterson's own words right up here on this stand, we set up plants in the Bauer House to capture ambient noises and sounds and things that would help us in our case. What Agent Peterson so desperately wanted to be a gunshot was nothing more than a car or a truck backfiring. How do you know that? Experience, Counselor. 
Well, wouldn't experience also tell you the difference between an internal sound and an external sound? Or are you testifying that a backfiring truck was in the living room of the Bauer house? Or are you saying, did uh, Agent Peterson lie under oath? No, I am not saying that. Agent Peterson thought it was a gunshot. Agent Peterson was wrong. And as his supervisor, I instructed him to edit that tape, edit the sound out, so that there would be no misconception. Well, if it was an innocuous sound, why bother? Why erase it? He was talking about going to Washington. And frankly, I was concerned for a new agent, that they would be reprimanded. Perhaps he might even be fired for an overzealous, albeit understandable, pursuit of justice. Oh, so you're saying that nobody at the FBI, even your superior, knows the difference between a truck and a gun. Counselor, I'm with the FBI, and I know the difference. Okay. So then you were protecting Agent Peterson, is that right? If my judgment was wrong, if I bent the rules a little bit to protect an agent, a new agent who was unknown to them about to put their whole career and dream at risk, I will gladly take that responsibility. Now, on June 5th, you were alone in the Bauer house, weren't you? I've already answered that question, and counselor. you found Danny's gun. I don't recall. And you fired the weapon, and you retrieved the spent bullet, Your and Honor. you planted that bullet uh, in the body that you found in the leg, the body that you passed off as Carmen Santos. Your Honor. Now, Agent Itoro, you have lied about your whereabouts. You've lied about evidence. You've lied about Enough, being in charge Mr. of Marler. the investigation. Have you told the truth about anything, Agent Itoro? Enough. Yes, Your Honor. You have heard enough. I've heard enough, and they have heard enough. And you are not protecting Agent Peterson. You are protecting yourself because you were so determined to put Danny in jail that you not only bent the law, you broke the Your Honor, counsel is now testifying. Find a question or sit down. Yes, Your Honor, I have found a question. The question is why? What is driving you to put Danny Santos in jail no matter the cost? What is worth that much to you? You're so melodramatic, Counselor. There's no big mission going on here. There's... It's just a matter of bringing a murder to justice, and that is it. No, no, in the timeline of things, you did not know that. Until Danny Santos testified, all you had was a body that turned out not to be Carmen Santos and a bullet that you were going to plant in that body. You had nothing to justify pursuing this case. Is there a question anywhere inside? Yes, I have a question. Can you explain your motives? I am a special agent for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I put killers in jail. Beyond that, my mood, my feelings, my motives are irrelevant. Irrelevant? I disagree. Well then, Counselor, we agree to disagree then. How's that? No, we can't allow you to do that. Because who you are is the core of this case. Who are you, sir? And I ask that question because, in fact, there is no such person as Gus Itoro. Is there? <laughs>